Oh, g'day guys, we've got a partial derivatives question today where we've got to find the derivative of this function with respect to y. Now we've got a function here which is in terms of x and y, but we're only going to take the derivative in terms of y. So the rate of change of the function with respect to y is what we're going to do. Now just recapping guys, we use partial derivatives when we have a function of more than one variable. So rather than having like f of x, we have f of x comma y comma z. So you have functions of more than one variable. So these all can change. So we take partial derivatives where we see how the change in one of these variables, in the case that we're doing today, it's going to be how the change in y affects the change in the function. So we don't care about what the other two variables are doing. So what we do is we hold those two constant. So we fix both of these variables and we do the derivative of y with respect, f with respect to y. So in this case we don't have a z, but we are going to use the same principle. We're going to hold x constant, treat it as a constant, and then take the derivative with respect to y. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got the function is y sine of xy. Now if we take this in terms of y, we're going to have to use the product rule because we have two functions that are being multiplied. We've got a linear function here, and we have a trigonometric function here. So just so you guys are aware, um, the product rule, if we've got a function, oh, let me just write it like this, y is equal to f of x times g of x. The derivative of this is equal to the derivative of one of the functions. So we have f prime of x and we just multiply it by the back one. And then we add to it g prime of x times the front one, const left constant. Cool. So we take the derivative of one and then leave the other, then take the derivative of the other and leave this one. So getting back to the function that we have, guys, in this case, if we want to find the rate of change of f with respect to y, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the front function. So we're going to go del d dy of y times by the back function left constant. Then we're going to add that to the front one. We're going to leave it the same. So we just got y times by the derivative with respect to y of the back function. Cool. So let, if you just to make it easy to see, we'll put that in brackets. That's what we have to do the derivative of, and we also have to do the derivative of that. Cool. So let's just change color, guys. So the derivative of just y with respect to y, so we have delta f delta y. This first one is just going to be 1. So we have 1 times sine of xy, so we're just left with sine of xy. And then we have y, we can just put that back, times the derivative of sine of xy with respect to y. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so y times the cosine of xy. Now we use the chain rule here, because then we have to do times that by the derivative of the inside function, which in this case, the derivative of xy with respect to y is equal to just x. Cool. So finally, guys, we can try and find some space. We have delta f over delta y is equal to the sine of xy 
plus we can take that X and move it and we have XY cos of XY and that my friends is the solution so let's just run through what we've had to do today so we've got a function which is in terms of many variables so we have this rather than having a sort of a independent and a dependent variable where we have X and then the function of X what we now have is we have a third um, variable which takes goes along here so we have a y variable and this function is determined by whatever x is and whatever y is so rather than getting a straight line we actually just we get a plane function so you know you're going to have it's going to be very difficult for me to draw this but the you're going to have some kind of plane that works on this thing so what happens is if you move like if you keep what we did here is we kept x constant and moved down y so for a particular x value let's on the plane we were here what we did is we saw how it changed as we moved down y but we could have effectively do exactly the same thing and go well we could hold y constant you know, well how does it change when we move around x and that would be like moving the other direction so that's what we've basically done here. We've held one variable constant and treated as a constant and then differentiated with respect to the other variable. So in this case, the x one was a constant. Now guys, this is still a relatively basic partial derivatives question, um, but it's also good to make sure we're well grounded in our partial derivatives before we you know, move on to more complicated ones. So doing questions like this over and over again will really really help when you get to the more complex ones because this kind of the um, what would you say the algorithm that is required to solve this will become more intuitive to you so guys I hope this video helped if it did you know give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel I do put out new videos all the time on maths and sciences and all a number of topics but until next time keep enjoying your maths and I hope to see you back here soon